Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lined up. Some great information coming from our special guest. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. It's going to get back up in the 90s today. The last couple of days, it's only been, only been 88. But now, getting back up in the 90s, low of eight, uh, 77, and water temperature is 88. That's stuck on that number. We talked about this yesterday. Really warm gulf water. Okay, let's take a look at our... Uh, First thing to look at our river readings, the Appalachia Coast of Bluntstown, looking at, again, this has been leveled off for two and a half weeks now, right around two foot. Today it's bounced up to 2.5, but that's not a, that's a negligible movement right there. So it's been around two foot, and I keep hearing really good reports from the Appalachia Coast River system up and down the river. Choctatch at Caraville had a 4.6, and it's got a slight fall to it. So this weekend, uh, it'll be falling on out just a little bit. And we're getting a lot of these afternoon thunderstorms, and coming and going, that just has a very uh, momentary effect on, on these rivers like that, okay? Tide chart, Kent Forest Lawn, Funeral Home and Cemetery. Again, neap tides. We've had four or five days of neap tides this week. Friday's gonna start kicking in a little bit. Saturday will be a pretty decent tide as you see there on your chart, okay? Marine forecast, south, southwest at 10 to 15. And, and be aware, it's been windy the last couple of afternoons, and so be aware, uh, it really summer uh, thunderstorms, I talk about them a lot, but when they come in, uh, not just the lightning, but a wind kicks up, especially in a small boat. Just be aware of that and uh, be, be ready for, for it to come up quickly on you. All right, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Glad you're with us and look at our familiar face, Travis. Good morning. Good morning, Travis. And we're going to start off at the top of right here. Congratulations on the new dad. Yes, sir. All yes, right. sir. We had uh, Isabella Madison was born last Tuesday, the 19th. Okay, and listen, we uh, I'm always showing pictures of these big old fish and all. We're going to show one of the best pictures I've ever seen here in Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> Check this out right here. Isabella Madison. All right. She's got a little Beautiful. grin on her face there. <laughs> and she came she, out with a head full of hair. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, mom and baby all doing great? They're doing really good, really good. It was a little surprise. We had her over there in San Dustin instead Tell of Gulf Coast. Tell that real quick how it happened because y'all, <laughs> being parents, you can appreciate something like this. It was kind of unexpected. Uh, I mean, we knew she was coming, but Nicole was taking a class over in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually on duty that night. We said our good nights. And then she called me back five minutes later and said my water broke. So uh, we kind of went into scramble mode. I went home, changed vehicles, and I got a good friend of mine to pick her up to start getting her back this way because mm -hmm. we had everything set up here at Gulf Coast in Panama City. And uh, we met in Niceville, and at that point we had to make a decision, either take 20 and get on back or go on down to 98, and just in case we needed to go into Destin or Sand Destin, we could. And when she got in the vehicle with me, her contractions were like nine minutes apart, then it went to three three minutes apart and we yeah. said ah we better not try to push it mm -hmm. so we went to Sacred Heart and San Destin which was a real nice facility and they were great and everything worked out good so so she was born in San Destin yep well, exactly said, she's a Walton County girl yeah, well she <laughs> has sand in her shoes but uh yeah that'd be great and I know that's exciting yeah it well, was. you know we're talking about real people and real things there you go right there <laughs> that's a great example of it. so we're yep. proud for you and happy for you appreciate it okay but you're still having to work. Still having to work. <laughs> still having to work. So I took off a few days and, and hard back at it. So she's going to be off for about two to three months yeah. to take care of the baby. So. Well, good. Well, we'll have, I'm looking forward to having pictures of her over the years and holding up some fish and all that. We're oh, yeah. As so. soon as she can start walking, we're going to introduce her to that great outdoors. I can it, promise you that. That's wonderful. And I'm sure she'll be in deer stand up there in Jackson County. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. sir. You'll raise her right. <laughs> and uh, I know, I know the. Uh, you said they came over and blessed her and all the. Uh, they did. It was real cool. They had yeah. had chaplain come in and pray for her the next day, yeah. and it was really good. That's good. Good deal. Outdoor. Let's okay. get it outdoors. What's going on? All right. We'll turn to FWC here, and um, we're going to start with the offshore fishery, something that's always fluid, dynamic, changing. And if you're going to fish out there, you've got to get on the internet. You've got to sign up for these email or text alerts because these seasons. Um, they change all the time mm -hmm. and uh, you know we have we, we have to do a lot of, of work to keep up with what's you know ever changing in this offshore fishery you know we have their state and federal waters mm -hmm. um, everyone's excited August 1st gray trigger fish and greater amberjack was scheduled to open 
uh, reopen in, in state and federal waters. They have their June, July closure. However, the uh, NOAA Fisheries decided that their quota has been met by, based on their data. So Great Trigger Fish and Greater Amberjack will be closing in federal waters through the end of the year. So they, they, I mean, they're already closed. They will not reopen is what I'm saying. So um, that's going to disappoint tough. a lot of people. Yeah. But uh, there's some uh, silver lining there. If you look at the, uh, the Trigger Fish, FWC talked about this in June when they met in Apalachicola. They're going to mirror that regulation. So. In, in state waters and federal waters, trigger fish is closed the rest of the year. But for Amberjack, uh, FWC, they are going to reopen Amberjack in state waters August 1st. Okay, good. So, um, you know, I talked to Melissa Rex, one of our uh, fisheries biologists yesterday, and she said right now we don't have a closure for Amberjack. We, you know, it, it's scheduled to go till the end of the year. They're going to talk about it in September if they're going to do an early closure. But right now for the month of August and September, Amberjack is going to be open. That's in good. state waters. So remember the new 34 inch size limit that we mm -hmm. talked about this year. And uh, it's going to be a little difficult to get one of those in state waters. But if you get out there at that seven, eight, nine mile range, yeah. especially if you go down the west, get some of that deeper water, um, I've heard that they are catching some legal ones, um, or they were this spring, you know, before they closed. So that's the yeah. big news on the offshore fishery. Okay. Okay. So that, that stuff's always changing. But I tell you, you know, there's a good thing you can do is if you go to the, the NOAA website, you can actually sign up for these email alerts. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they anticipate or they're going to close something that's not scheduled to be closed or, or something, you know, something's going to change, they'll send you an email. And, and that just gets the information out there as quickly as we can to our anglers because that's, you know, we want to give as much information as we can because it's just changing all the time. And that's the thing about it, it's, it's just a fluid is the word you use, and that's, that's the best way to describe it because, uh, like I say, they, they think one thing, uh, they see research on one thing back in the springtime, but in the summertime, it's something else. And, that's and correct. They, they're getting more and more data as far as cl collecting from catches. They are. And, and that, that, so you know, they're trying to prove it scientifically, and, and it's not just like they're pulling something out of the hat and on right. their feelings. I mean, they've got some basics for, for scientific evidence. They do. and uh, But, yeah, that's one thing. I mean, if you sign up for the email alerts with, with the feds, and then you, also, you can also do it with MyFWC, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll do the same thing for the state regulations. So, okay, so that's the offshore fishery. And then now let's just talk about, before I come on again, it's going to be open this new short season in Gulf County, St. Joe Bay, mm -hmm. uh, for the scallops. And we talked about it last show. It's mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of weird, but it's actually 40 scallops per person is going to be your your bag limit, or 200 per vessel, whichever is less. And the reason they're doing that is because they, they just didn't have very good numbers at all on the counts this year mm -hmm. for uh, St. Joe Bay. So got a special uh, season, August 22 till through September 5th. So you got the Labor Day weekend in there. As you were talking about, a lot of people are going to be back in school yeah. on that late August. Day. Except for Coach Chester, who's now retired, <laughs> I'm gonna get on my phone and call all my buddies and say, "I wish y'all were here." <laughs> I'll, I'll but, be. You're gonna be out there open in morning. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, it's kind of weird there, you know, season. But they're trying to let people, you know, at least participate and, and take some of the resource, but try not to hurt it because it was low. That's true. That's true. And and uh, we are going to go scout it out and look around if I feel if I feel personally that there's enough out there for us to get for for supper that night. We'll get us a mess. If not, we'll just. Uh, and I also want to scout it out and take the grandkids for the weekend when they get out of school. So uh, that's how we're going to look at it. And uh, we'll talk to some people. I'm sure I see a lot of people out there. So I'm looking forward go. to it. Good deal. Hopefully that wind will lay down by then because it yeah. has been windy. Um, and then just a reminder, the normal season, which has been going on, we get June 25th through September 25th. That's east of St. Vincent Island all the way to Big Ben, Pasco, Hernando County line. And uh, got a new lieutenant in town. He's from Franklin County, worked Franklin County mm -hmm. for many, many years. And I asked him about scallops over there, and he said, actually, there's a pile of them on the east side of Franklin County when that water clears up. Mm -hmm. He said they have some good reports, and they're getting a bunch of them. That's good. That's so, good. Not too far away. I, no, no, it's not. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Trying to check out, check out this picture, folks. We're going to show you one nice picture today, a quality picture. So Phil Chester out of Panama City Beach. Y'all know Phil. Maybe he's out there on the commission out there, and he's a good fisherman. Uh, and that's a Travis. That's a nice redfish. Isn't it's a beautiful it? redfish. Looks like he's perfect in the slot too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all see Phil Chester? They tell me something on TV. We're trying to zoom in and see what he caught it on. Might be a mirrodine, maybe. Looks like some kind All of right. plug. Where to get his plug? Right, they caught that Sunday afternoon. All right. Very good. Now uh, let's get back to FWC. All right, FWC. Hey. 
actually opening today and tomorrow. We got mini season for lobster. Okay. Big deal down south, especially uh, southeast Florida, Florida Keys. I mean, it's huge down there. I remember when I used to work Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. It was just, I mean, it was it was like scallops up here, I guess you could say. Imagine yeah. if scallop had a two-day season, how many people would be out there for that little season. And um, it's going to be today and tomorrow. Um, we do have divers up here that go after spinies. But uh, then the regular season is August 6th through March 31st. The reason I mention that is because FWC has had this lionfish removal program for a couple years now. Mm -hmm. And this year they did something special as far as if you remove 50 lionfish, um, you qualify for this lionfish challenge, you get a commemorative coin, and that um, allows you, that coin allows you to take one extra spiny lobster per day during the two-day sports season, which a lot of people call mini season. Mm -hmm. So you could have one over your bag limit by doing that. So you're helping the resource out. They want to remove this exotic fish that has been you know, detrimental to our native reef fish. Right. And uh, it's a pretty cool thing. And I, some people, you know, still from Panama City area will go all the way down the Keys mm -hmm. and, and they'll go for many seasons. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now, um, just to give you some numbers on that, this kicked off May 14th this year. Um, they've had over 6,500 lionfish killed. Good. J that's, that's documented. I mean, we know yeah. there's more. And, you know, I've had them. And actually, if you get a decent size one, you know how to clean them and cut the, the, uh, the spines off because they're poisonous, um, they're pretty good. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, you can eat them too, and then you're you're helping the the, the resource out and and uh, the fishery as well. Now up here in the Panhandle, they're doing a pilot program, and that's Escambia County all the way to Franklin County, so our entire Panhandle region, Northwest region. Um, if you do a hundred lionfish, and the reason they're making a hundred up here, there there seems to be more of them up here actually in, the, in this deeper water. Yeah. Um, if you check in a hundred between uh, May 2016 and May 2017, uh, you'll be eligible to receive a tag that will um, allow you to take a legal size red grouper or a legal size cobia over your bag limit for one day. Okay. So they're just trying to reward, you know, it's really divers that are getting them. You don't really see people catching many at all on hook and line. I've seen a few people yeah. during some, when snapper season was in, they a few people came with some big line fish on hook and line for the most part. It's uh, divers that are getting these, and they want to reward the people for taking them. They want to encourage them, hey, while you're down there, if you see them, go ahead and pop them mm -hmm. and, uh, and take them. So that's pretty neat. And, you know, this thing's growing. They had a roundup over in Pensacola um, earlier this year, and it's, it's really catching on. There's a lot of them in Pensacola. I've seen some pictures. There is, and there's yeah. some big ones too. Yeah. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, and other than that, you know, what's going on in the bay right now, um, we got a lot of people going out floundering. Mm -hmm. So, just want to remind everyone on that, uh, make sure you, you leave your navigation lights on because some people, they'll get out there, they'll have the lights above the deck and it lights up the world and there's no way you can miss them. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people, if they're sneaking around, they got these underwater lights mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they get out on a point or something like that and we just want to make sure that they can be seen by other boaters out there. Yeah. So, have your navigation lights on. and. And uh, where you're out there, you know, you can you can gig sheep's head. You can go on uh, myfwc.com or look in our regulations. What else you can gig besides flounder? Anything you can spear, you can gig. Okay, so I know some of them gig mullet, right? Yes. Mullet legal. Yep. Sheephead legal. Correct. Yeah, whatever. And uh, and I'm getting weekly reports now on flounder. We're about to get you know late summer and fall is when the season is, and you've already seen some people out there. We're seeing them. Uh, yeah. You know, when I check people, a lot of times. It's, it's toward the beginning. I've checked some at the end, and yeah. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot. I mean, yeah. the most I've seen, they, they got four or five they considered a good night. Yeah, and but, that's uh, the reports I'm, I'm getting. And also, I got, got a report last night, matter of fact, uh, or this morning when I got up, I checked it, and uh, they're on a small side, a little bit of them on a small side, mm -hmm. and uh, they haven't passed up a lot of them. Right, and that's the thing. When you're, when you're gigging, you can't throw them back, yeah, so you yeah, want them to right. be there. And, and a good, good gigger can, you know, you'll know. If it's close, just let it go, get it next time. Correct. But one thing to remember when you're doing that, uh, you can get blue crabs, and they're in too right now. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're not egg bearing. Okay, they got that big orange sack underneath them. You got to throw those back to the big females. But you can't gig blue crabs. If you see them, have a dip net there. You can scoop them up, and a lot of people, they'll have a mess of them. Yeah. But you can't gig them. So just one thing to remember on that. Okay. And uh, like I say, be, be safe out there and all. And, and they're out there all, a lot of them, a lot there late midnight, two or three o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. You'll see them all the time. Check the other night, yeah, around one or two. And they, a lot of people don't even get out there until midnight. Yeah. Because they want that water to calm down. And we just passed the full moon, so now we're getting toward a dark moon. So probably this weekend there'll be a lot of folks out there. Oh, yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. 
Okay, we're going to take our final break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fish and game times. First thing, uh, look at that. Uh, brought to us by Barron's Barbecue Shrimp Marinade, 7.05 to 9.05 this morning and 7.32 to 9.32 this evening. I did want to mention the CCA, the Star Tournament. We've talked about this before. I'm going to have a guest come on tomorrow. She's coming up from Orlando, and she works with the Coastal Conservation Association, and she's here for a couple of days. She's coming on the show, and this is the Redfish Tournament we're going to talk about. And this happened, remember last year when I was up in Lynn Haven Park and they, they had a little redfish tournament and a guy brought a redfish in that was tagged and he had not entered the tournament oh, and man. he passed up a $40,000 contender boat. He, he lost it. Mm. Well, just got word uh, this past weekend, two fishermen along the Florida coast, line, Gulf Coast, two fishermen caught, uh, one was a 15-year-old boy at a Gulf Breeze. He caught a, a slot-sized redfish. It was tagged by CCA. And first place was a $40,000 contender boat, and he had not registered. He, he took the redfish home and ate it. You got to register. Second guy was from St. Petersburg. He caught one, same store. He had not registered. So two people that we know of. So what, she's going to come up. We're going to talk about it, about the importance of registering. I, it's not much at all, but you do have to register ahead of time. And listen, that's, it's not just those prizes. It's $500,000, half a million dollars worth of prizes. And some of them are going to be random drawings. So uh, we're going to have this on, on the show tomorrow. So... Uh, let's let's uh, move on though. We got our case of the month. Sure, that's a cool tournament though. Oh, awesome, How many did and, they tag? And, and did they, they say? Well, they, she told me. She told me personally. She called me and she said we tagged a lot of fish up there in the Panhandle. Really? Yeah. So y'all need to be aware of that. Uh, so you, you know. It, uh, it's amazing. I might have to register. I don't you know. How, I don't know when I'm going to be able to go fishing again, but I, know <laughs> yeah, I need to register for that. Yeah, it'd be bad if case one on duty would it? <laughs> yeah. Can't do that. <laughs> all right, all right. Case of the month. Okay, case of the month. So. Um, this is Officer Dennis Palmer here in Bay County, and uh, he was on uh, Water Patrol at night, uh, St. Andrews Bay System. He saw a vessel that was operating at night with no navigation lights. He goes and conducts the stop, um, and then he starts talking with the guy, and uh, the guy says, well, I'm coming back from checking my crab traps. He goes, oh, okay, cool. What'd you get? He goes, well, I got these crabs here. Well, he had 10 crabs. The problem was they were stone crabs, not blue crabs. <laughs> And it's closed season on stone crabs. You also can't have the whole crab as well. You gotta take the claws. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, he addressed the violation and uh, I think he ended up writing him a warning for the for the lights, wrote him a warning for the whole stone crab and then wrote him a citation for uh, possession of stone crab in the closed season. So, you know, it closes in the summertime, it's gonna open there in mid-October every yeah. year. So it's a pretty good case and that's something we see all the time. And that's another thing too, if you're floundering, because I've seen people when, you know, last year we caught some guys Stone crabs close in the summertime. Yeah. You know, when people flounder, yeah. usually summer, late summer, early fall, and, and they're closed. you got to let them go right now. So pretty good case by Dennis, and yeah, uh, you never know what you're going to get into out there. Yeah, I love these local cases like that. When uh, You know, well, I, I can see him now. Officer, I was I was checking my crab traps. Well, he was <laughs> in his mind, I guess he was telling the truth, but he knew he was being crook. Right, right. <laughs> he was nervous, and uh, we thought, hey, or Dennis thought, you know, okay, yeah. where's your blue crabs? You yeah, know, nothing wrong with that. But uh, had all stone crabs there, so. That's funny. Another report I've been hearing too, um, you know, I've been working night shift a lot lately and underneath both the DuPont Bridge and the Hathaway Bridge on that outgoing tide, the bull redfish are just tearing it up. Yeah. There's bait everywhere. We got shrimp under the lights and they're just, I mean, they're getting some real nice catch. We see guys out there on kayaks, guys out there on boats. But uh, I guess, I think we talked about this last time, but they're also catching some tarpon mixed in there at the Hathaway Bridge That's mixed awesome. in with the redfish. They're trying to catch bull reds and then boom, they're catching tarpon or jumping them at least on half time yeah. they don't get them in. And that's got to be a thrill to hook up on one of those at night time. It is, and, and they're getting some of these big, big fish that we usually see along the beaches. Um, I talked to a friend of mine the other day that caught 80-pound class tarpon there at the Hathaway, not these little ones, so they're, yeah. they're big boys. That, that's awesome. It just shows you the versatility of, of our area. And, you know, those big fish will come up that channel, and they're going to be following that bait fish. They will. And I know you all have seen that. I know uh, it was funny. I've got some reports too on manatees. A lot of manatees are being seen. I've seen a couple this have, summer. Have you? Yep. And, you know, we do get a few up here in this area. Actually, over in uh, Chaltahatchee Bay, I had a guy call me the other day and he was concerned. He said, I think he's tangled in some crab trap buoys. Well, it was the mouth of the river over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told him, I said, Well, what does it look like? You know, and he started describing it to me. And there were three or four. And I contacted our biologist. They had actually tagged those 
okay. those animals and they track them where they go and you know because they don't stay up here all year mm. and they migrate up here in the warm weather months so the, the they were actually good to go he thought they were tangled in crab tracks is actually a radio tag well, that deal. had been put yeah. on them good deal okay real quick we've got gator gator season coming up soon that's correct that's all correct right. It is. Uh, middle of August, August 15th is when it's going to open up. Now, all, this, all the tags have been sold out. Um, but one thing just to remember, I was, I was talking to you earlier, I think this is probably, it's, oh, I know it is, one of the most highly regulated hunts that we have. Mm -hmm. um, compared to duck hunting, I think it is probably the most highly regulated. So if you're going to gator hunt, make sure you're, you're going during your, um, your, your season or your um, – it's, it's different weeks. You got three different weeks you can hunt. So make sure you're hunting during that week that you're assigned and you're assigned area. So like Bay County, you have the whole county. Mm -hmm. But some counties, you can either have a county or an area. An area would be like Lake Seminole, Lake Talc, and some of these bigger lakes. So right. make sure you're hunting your area the right times. Uh, you got methods to take. All this stuff can be uh, found on our website, myfwc.com. Click on hunting and then alligators. Okay. And then uh, bass fish are doing real good. Fresh water, I'm, I'm hearing some good reports on fresh water. You guys hear some good reports? On the rivers, on yes. The river. And yeah. Yeah, late in the afternoon, the fly fishermen are doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's been pretty low. I know you said it came back up a little bit, but it's been down, which is usually yeah. pretty good. So Yeah, so, uh, you know, just make sure uh, you have you know, proper lighting. Again, you're know, talking about nighttime, proper lighting. And you're talking about speed on the water. You don't need speed on the water. And, and uh, just uh, uh, communicate with people. Let people know where you are. Exactly. So uh, y'all see a lot of that. Okay, yes, we're, gonna start, we're gonna start wrapping things up. Again, congratulations on fatherhood. It'll be Thank you very uh, much. one of the most rewarding things of your life. We're gonna, we're gonna, Jeff and I can vouch for that. So uh, folks, uh, if you had, you know, again, we'll remind you, what's the 800 number if you see a violator, like somebody getting scalloped at uh, Shell Island, what do we, who do we call? You need to call Wildlife Alert. Wildlife Alert. Yeah, call us because okay. we can't be everywhere. Give us a call and, and we'll send somebody out. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate it. Good job, buddy. Uh, again, thank you all for watching the Panhandle Outdoors. We're America's only daily outdoor TV show. We're proud of it, proud to have you as an audience, and thank our, our sponsors. And do something good today for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.